Well, welcome back everybody. Happy Easter. I hope you had a wonderful two weeks um, of enjoying the sunshine, eating chocolate. I'm sure you did some of that as well. Um, so this is a video to help you with week three of your home learning tasks. Um, these pages that you've been set for um, this week are mostly about uh, mental arithmetic, finding the difference between numbers or adding or subtracting. Um, lots of stuff that we've done in class before. But I wanted just to go through in this video with you um, a couple of the questions on page 19 about finding um, the difference between uh, two numbers and also just um, a couple from page 20 as well. You're all very capable of working these ones out, but I thought I'd just use these as examples just to go through um, some of the key things to remember. So to start with, we're going to have a look at the questions on page 19, question three and question four. So question three says, I subtract one number from another and get 90. Circle the two numbers used. So it's asking you to find the difference between those numbers. OK, so when you subtract one number from another, you're working out um, what you've got left, but you're also working out um, the, the space between those two numbers, how much is between those two numbers. Um, and so with this question, the, the numbers there look quite big, which can, can put you off straight away. But if you look at um, a simpler version of the problem here, I subtract one number from another and get 20, circle the two numbers used. Now, if you look at the numbers underneath, 40, 10, 5, 20 and 50, I want you to see if you can think of which two numbers there, if you took one number and you took away the other number, you subtracted, you'd end up with 20 as your answer. Okay. So have a look and see which number, which numbers are 20 apart from each other. Because when you take a bigger number and you subtract a smaller number, and you get 20, those numbers will be 20 apart. There'll be 20 between them. So which ones do you think? So if we look at a couple of examples here, if I just took the first two, 40, if I took away 10, that gives me 30. So that's not the answer. I couldn't do 10, take away 20, because we always have to start with the, the biggest number. I could do 50 take away 20, that'd be 30. But I'm sure you've all worked out that actually if you do 40 take away 20, you'll end up with 20. So they have a difference of 20, these two numbers. And you can think of this in a fact triangle. They're in a little um, family, which is called inverse family. And we'll be covering this a bit more um, in in a, a couple of videos time but just just to think about it and you probably have seen this before if you put the biggest number at the top so this this is for addition and subtraction you've got the 20 you take away 20 and you'll get 20 is the answer okay and you could do that in whatever order you could do 40 take away 20 would equal 20 40 take away 20 would equal 20 or 20 add 20 would take you back to the 40. Now this is kind of a funny example because the numbers are the same at the bottom, but if I did another one, so um, 30, 10 and 20, okay, you could add those two and you could subtract here. So you could do 30 take away 10 is 20, 30 take away 20 is 10, 10 add 20 is 30. Okay, so they're all kind of together in this triangle relationship which we will come back to i'm not going to talk about any more now but it's just about how the numbers are connected about how they can be um, used to add up to make one number or subtracted to find to find the other 
Okay, so if we just look back at this number three, um, so it's saying it's a difference of 90. Okay, now helpfully these numbers are actually in order from smallest to biggest, which you might have worked out, which is actually quite helpful. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just switch to a screen of my computer with me talking because I've got an online resource that will um, help you see um, these numbers on a number line a little bit more easily. And I'll pop the, the link for that resource in the description if you would like to um, have a go on it yourself. So I'll see you there. OK, so this is the website I was telling you about. It's an interactive number line. I will pop the um, the link for this in the description underneath the YouTube video if you'd like to have a go on it yourself. OK, so this is just to demonstrate um, showing the difference between numbers. So I've got on the screen 150 and 220. OK, so having a look at the difference between these. OK, we've got a difference of 70. Now, in the question, it's saying two numbers um, and you get 90. So that one's not right. Those those two pairs. Now, the next number along was 290. If I slide this up now, this is obviously way too big now, 140. But maybe if I slide this one up to 220 and we'll see what that one was. Oh, that's 70 as well. So that one's no good. I wonder what three, if we have 340 perhaps and 290, that's only 50. So we're looking to find a difference of 90. OK, now I've done a few of them. We've gone through a few examples. You might be able to work out um, what the difference of 90 would be. Remember, 90 is just nine tens, so you can count on in tens nine times until and from one of the numbers and, and to see if you get to one of the other numbers and that will be your pair. Um, but this just demonstrates how you are looking for that, that difference between the numbers because remember you can take away 340, take away 50 is 290, 340, take away 290 is 50. So they have that connected relationship. Okay. So that's just having a look at um, the third one. I'm not going to go any further with that because I'd like you to work out the, the actual answer. I've given you some ones that didn't work, but I'm sure you can work out the pair that does work. Remember, you were looking for a difference of 90 between two of the numbers. OK, so let's just have a little look at question four now. Now that we've had a look at question three and answered that one using the number line, um, question four is um, a similar idea, but it has worded it differently. So it says, what must I take away from 253 to make 173? Now, if it's easier to see that in numbers rather than words, it's basically asking you, what must you take away from 253? So what, what mystery number must you take away to end up at 173? OK, and coming back to our um, little fact triangles that we were talking about briefly with subtraction and addition, you can reverse the order um, of some of the numbers um, to make it easier to work out um, because numbers are linked together. So, for example, we know that five take away two equals three, five take away three equals two, two add three is five and three add two equals five okay because these are inverse operations which means they're, they're kind of the opposite of each other um so take away and add are kind of the opposite of, of each other so there's these four calculations which can be uh, the numbers can be changed the order um, and it can still mean the same thing as long as you've got the biggest number first for the subtraction it's fine so for this one 253 we know what one of the numbers is, 173, but we don't know what the other one is here. So instead of um, taking away something to equal this one, 
what we can do is actually do 253 take away 173, which would then give us that mystery number. So we can rewrite this calculation and think of it as actually this way around, which is our mystery number. Okay, so 253 take away 173 would then give you that mystery number as well. Okay, so just looking quickly at these numbers, um, if you look at the units, can you notice that it's the same? So they both end in a three. Okay, so that tells you that actually there won't be any units which are, are subtracted. Um, if that had changed from a three and then to a two here, then, then something has changed, but it's a three both times. Okay, so there's no units that have been subtracted, which means the number must end in a zero. Now, all the answers it has given you end in a zero, so um, it's kind of done that step for you. But if you didn't have the answers, you could automatically know that it must be a multiple of 10 because the units haven't changed. Okay, and when you're changing the tens, the units don't change. So you can have a look before you even start to work it out and kind of discount the answers which are either too big or too small. So for example, if you took away 20 from 253, you're not going to get to 173 because it's not enough. So answers like that you can kind of disregard very quickly. I also know that if I took away 100 from 253, my hundreds will change. It will change to 100, but the 53 will stay the same. So again, that's one that I, I can discount, okay? I'm gonna flick back to the computer just so that we can have a little look at a similar problem on the number line and also at um, another website which has a flip counter on it, which can help us count in backwards in, in multiples of 10, okay? Okay, so this um, is having a look at question four still. Now the numbers are slightly different here, partly because I can't do 253 um, and 173 using this resource. Um, it will only let me do fives, um, which is slightly irritating, but I will demonstrate it in a slightly different way. So I've um, got displayed here the numbers 175 and 265. So this question is effectively, what must I take away from 265 to make 175? So just like the last question, I'm trying to find out the difference between them. So 265 take away something, which is this box, will give me 175. Okay, so I'm going backwards. All right. Now these questions can be worked out using the column method. You could do 265 take away 175 in the column method. Just like with the actual question, you could do 253 take away 173 in the column method. But you can also count on or you can count back. Um, in, in this case, and in the case that we know with the question, because the units haven't changed, the units are still three in the actual question, and they're, they're both five in, in this one on the screen, um, you could count on or back in tens. Okay, now counting on is always going to be easier than counting back. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate the counting on for you, and I'm going to be using um, another website, um, which is called Flip Counter. So with the flip counter, it just helps us to, to count along. Now, before I start counting the flips, I'm just going to show you um, how I'm going to get to 265. So these are the tens, so I'm going to be adding tens. OK, so there's one ten. So we're adding on. Now, when we get to this point, I wonder if you can tell um, me what the next number would be. This is the tricky bridging over the hundreds there. Remember, we've got nine tens. If I add another 10, I'm going to end up with 10 tens. And what is 10 tens the same as? So 10 tens is the same as 100. So that 100 is going to end up with the hundreds. And we're going to start again here. So have a look. So there, can you see 100 has been added here because that was 10 tens. And now we're back to, to nothing. We're going to keep going. 
Okay, getting to our target number. So if I go backwards, and we'll count this time. So I'm going to count the tens, count the flips. Okay, so one, two, count with me, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that was nine tens I've added on there. So what is nine tens? Nine tens is 90. Nine tens is 90. And that's the difference between those two numbers. So 265 take away 90 is 175. 175 add on 90 is 265. 265 take away 175 would also leave me with 90. So you can use um, that idea to help you with number four. Again, I'll put the link to the flip counter in the description of the video so you can have a look um, and maybe use that to help you work out the answer if you're not sure. Um, but we can count in tens, you can count on and see where you get to. Okay, so now we're going to have a little look at the questions on page 20. So question three and four. Now these questions can be worked out mentally in your head, but they can also be worked out using the column method. Um, and it just depends on which you'd rather use really. Um, I would always say, feel free to work it out in your head if you are a quick mathematician in your head and you're often very accurate. Um, using a method is often a more accurate way of doing it because your your brain sometimes can forget numbers or, or make little mistakes because you're trying to hold lots of things in your head. So sometimes you, you could try and work it out in your head and then maybe check it with the column method. Um, but it's up to you. See, see what you'd like to use. Um, on my Pocket Teacher channel, there is a video which goes through the column method. Now we've done it loads in class and it's one of those methods that we do over and over again because it is so important. Um, and I really don't want you to forget how to use that method. So I would like you at some point during this um, this week to, to recap the column method, um, which might just be as simple as your parents giving you some, some sums to, to, to work out. Um, so in my channel, my YouTube channel, there is a, a video that goes through the column method in detail in case you have forgotten any bits, especially the exchanging. Remember, you only cross out when you're subtracting um, and extra numbers are only added on when um, when you're when you're adding. Now, having a look at question three, um, it's written out in words, which just is just deliberately trying to make it harder for you, really. But it's um, if you read it carefully, the, the, the sum that comes out of it, the calculation that it's asking you to do is is not too bad. So what number is 47 more than 186? OK, so that can be written out in numbers. What number is 47 more than 186? OK, so we've got 186. OK, and it's saying what is 47 more than that? OK, so if I was going to add on 47 more, what would I get to? OK, so writing that out as an actual calculation, it's 186 add on 47. OK, so that's all it's asking you to do. So as I said, you may well be able to do that in your head, but I would recommend using the column method to have a go at that one. And please refer to um, the, the video in my channel if you have forgotten. Now, having a look at question four, Georgina measures the height of two sunflowers. After two weeks, both flowers have grown 18 centimetres taller. Calculate the heights of the sunflowers now. So there's two things you need to do here because there's two sunflowers. And all it's saying is that each sunflower has grown 18 centimetres taller. So 18 centimetres more than it already is. OK, so here you've got 79 add 18 and here you've got 128 add 18. 
okay, 18 more centimetres. So you just have to work out those calculations. Again, in your head or using the column method. These, this one is easier to work out in your head because actually 18 is very nearly 20 and that might help you to work it out mentally. Um, but it's your choice. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, going to actually give you a couple of questions, um, one subtraction and one addition um, for you to practice your column method. OK, this isn't in the book, but this is just two additional questions, which will be really good if you could practice so that you um, can make sure you've got that column method ticking along in your brain and you don't forget it. OK, so this is the first one we're going to do. 352 take away 178. Now I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at working this out. Um, I don't have any squared paper and you may well not have any squared paper either. So we're going to have to do our best with our, our layout and make sure it's nice and clear. So some of you in class, I taught you how to use the condensed column method, which is the kind of squished up method. Um, most of us use the expanded one where it's partitioned. Um, those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, we usually lay out our column method like this. So 352 would be 350 and 2, and then you'd put the 178 underneath. Now, some of you, there's only a handful of you, um, we have gone through the squished up method, the condensed method. Um, which is the more formal method, which your, your parents and older siblings will, will use. Um, so if you know that, feel free to have a go at that one. What I'll do is I'm going to work these out first using this expanded method, the, the usual one that we, we've learned in class. And then what I'll do at the end of the video is I'll do an extra little clip where I'll go through um, how to do the, the condensed method, the more formal method. Um, if you'd like to learn it or if you'd like to check um, your method if you did use that one okay so we'll do this one first okay so if you could pause the video and work out this answer and then click play and we'll see if you've done the same as me okay so here we go so what's really important to remember here is to keep looking at the fact that we're subtracting we are taking away because what is such a common mistake is um, that you forget whether you're adding or taking away and you do a beautiful method but it's completely the wrong answer because actually you've done the opposite of what it's asked so always check always look carefully okay so hopefully by now you've worked it out and you're just going to check to see if you've got it right now i'm really hoping you didn't fall into the trap here the the very easy trap to fall into that mistake which we talked about so much in class you can't flip the numbers OK, but I bet some of you may well have done eight take away two and got six here, which is not right. It says two take away eight. You can't flip the numbers, otherwise you are changing what the question actually is here. OK, so well done if you did two take away eight. Now we can't actually do that, so we're going to exchange from the tens. So ten of the tens are going to come over to the units to help out, leaving 40 there. And now this is going to be 12 here. So we have the 10 from the tens and the two from the units, which now makes 12. OK, so now we can do 12 take away 8, OK, which is 4. Then we've got 40 take away 70. Can't flip it. Can't flip it if it doesn't work. Can't flip it. It means you need to exchange. Now this time we're going to need to take a hundred. I'm going to leave 200 there and um, exchange and move one of the hundreds over to the tens to help out. Now I've run out of a room bit there, so I'm going to just add the hundred in front of the 40. So I've got 140 now rather than just 40 because one of the hundreds has come from here. 140 take away 70 is 70. 200 take away 100 is 100. So the answer is 174. Okay, did you get it right? Well done if you did. And then let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so here is your addition question. 486 and 245. So lay it out in the column method, work it out, pause the video, and then see if you've got it right. Okay, so here we go, laid out. So 6 add 5 is 11. Can't put 11 in one column because it's too much. 
So I'm going to leave the one unit there and I'm going to put the 10 on top of the tens. So the tens live with the tens, the units live with the units. OK, so 11, 10 and 1 is 11. So now 10 and 80 and 40, which is 130. Um, again, I have to leave the tens behind, the 30, the three tens, and the 100 is going to go in the hundreds column. And then I can add up my hundreds. 100, 400, 200 is 700. So the answer is 731. Did you get it right? Well done if you did. Now I'm going to, as I said, go through the squashed up condensed method just at the side here in case you did do that one. OK, if you don't want to learn it, um, you're happy with this method, please feel free not to watch the end um, of this bit. Um, just before I do that, um, on the home challenge this week, on the, the hot chilli challenge, there are some more questions um, for you to answer using the column method. And the home challenges are still comp um, still not compulsory. They are optional, um, so you don't have to do them. But as I always say, they are very useful for, for recapping things we've learned in class. Um, and as I said earlier, it's really important that you do practice the column method while you're away, um, particularly if it doesn't come up very often in the book. So um, any extra practice is a bonus. Um, and it'll be great if you can do that and feel free to email me anything that you do um, to my new year three at st-faith.net email um, and you can ask me any questions there too. I will also put up another card game video for you this week as well. OK, so goodbye and thank you if you're stopping here. But if you'd like to have a look at the, the squashed up method um, column method, um, then please do listen on. OK, so we lay it out in very similar way that you just don't partition the number. So instead of doing 350 and 2, you just write it as the number is 352, 178. OK, you're still taking away. You still need the lines at the bottom to show that. Remember, they're like giant equal signs to show you where the answer goes. Now. You do exactly the same process, but the difference is you are thinking um, slightly differently. Instead of knowing that this is 50, we now need to know that this is five tens, which is still 50. But we're thinking of three hundreds, five tens and two units. So instead of actually having 300 written out, we need to just think of how this is the hundreds column, the tens column and the units column. OK, so we've got one hundred, seven, tens, eight units there. OK, so two take away eight. Still can't do that. Still can't flip it. So we're going to exchange a ten. So just like we did here, we'll cross out the 50 or the five tens and we're going to leave 40 behind. Now, I'm not going to write 40 here because that would mean 40 tens, which is 400 and that would be too big. I'm just going to write four. There's four tens left, 40, four tens left. And then the one. OK, the one ten there is going to be put with the, the two to make 12, just like it did on the other side. Now I can do 12 take away eight is four. The reason I've circled this number above as well is just to make it clear that's a new number. OK, you can do it with these ones as well. Um, I'm going to run out of room here. And then we do four take away seven, which we can't do. Just like here, we couldn't do 40 take away 70. Four tens take away seven tens, we can't do. So we're going to exchange from the hundreds. So we're going to take a hundred away. I'm going to leave two hundreds behind. And I'm going to put one of the hundreds with the four tens. OK, and I'm going to write this just a bit like I did here. I'm actually going to write this. I'm just going to put it up here as 14, because actually 140 is 14 tens. So I've taken 10 tens from the hundreds and put it with the four tens, um, which has made 14 tens. OK, so it is exactly the same thing. It's just written as a as a place value kind of quantity rather than the actual um, amount it is here. So we've got 14 tens take away seven tens, which is seven tens, 70. 
Then we've got two hundreds take away one, one hundred, one hundred, and we get the answer already written for us, 174. Okay, I apologise, it was a bit squished at the top there. I'll try not to squish it up so much in this one. So this is adding. So 486, add 245. No ruler, no squared paper. What is the world, world coming to? Okay, so six add five is 11. So just like here, we're not changing the rules. We have to leave the one unit here and the 110 is going to go on top of the tens. Okay, so it's just a 110, but remember we just write it as one. 10 rather than actually just putting 10. So now we've got 1, 10, 8 and 4, okay, which is 13 altogether, 13 tens, which is the same as 130, which we worked out before. So the three tens are staying here. And then the 10 tens, because it was 13 altogether, 10 tens is 100. So that 100 is being put up on the top of the hundreds. So now we've got 100, 400 and two hundreds, which is seven hundreds. And then we've got our answer of 731. Okay. If you didn't understand that, I honestly wouldn't worry too much. Um, your family at home might be able to go through it with you a little bit more, but I haven't taught this method to everyone in class. Um, and I don't tend to until right towards the end of the year so I wouldn't worry if you're flummoxed by this method stick to this one because it's 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 just as good might use a bit more space but it's the same principle okay but if you're happy to use this then super go ahead okay have a lovely week hopefully the sun will be shining again and you can spend some time in the garden take care <laughs>